It's dinner time. Meat and potatoes. Let's do it. Answering your immigration questions. All right, let's go to Stacy in Cold Springs, Florida. Stacy. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, Brad? Very good. What's going on? Okay, I have two questions for you yes. today, time. I have all the First time in the world. Is, <laughs> First question is, I have filed my I-130-485 and 765 last year while I started the filing in, in August, but it never went through until November of last year. What do you mean it never went through? Um, in other words, you filed in August, but you got, a receipt, you got a receipt in November. I got a receipt notice in November. Okay, fine. Yeah, because they were very backed up because of COVID. Wrong. No, it was just because of COVID. Say it again? It was because of COVID. Oh, okay. They yeah. kept sending it back. No, they kept sending it oh, back oh. saying that we, do, we were doing something wrong. I see. And so we finally got it right. And so when we sent it that last time in November, they accepted it. Good. Um, so what I want to know is, I, I also did my biometrics in January of this year. What's a good timeline to expect a, um, before November of next year, like a work permit. Oh, but your work permit, you won't get till sometime over the summer and your interview for your green card should be October and November. Okay. Um, okay. So that's good. That's question number yeah. one. No. Now, now, when I, now when I, I want you to know that mm-hmm. the Biden administration is going to accept premium processing for work permits okay. as of May 31st to June, June 1st. Let's call it June 1st. They're going to accept premium processing for work permits as of June 1st. They're going to make people pay $2,500 to expedite a work permit in 14 days. Okay. If you want um, to pay it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying to do it. I, I if you want to pay it. Okay. Um, okay. So next question. I when we did when we originally filed in August, I also filed for my son's I one thirty back in Jamaica. He's fifteen. Um, you and I heard on a show before that we could expedite that that process by writing a letter for a humanitarian expedite. Yes. Everybody yeah. and their yeah. uncle is requesting humanitarian expedites. So unless it's a real serious issue, they're not going to do it now. Okay, so so does does um, the fact that I left him with his grandmother and now she's having um, issues with her health? Is yeah, that because really it's, it's very possible he'll be on the street with nobody to take care of him. It's a good humanitarian reason. You have to document mm-hmm. it, document it, and submit it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where do we submit this letter? Though? Right, wherever your immigration case is pending. Okay, so wherever we sent his papers prior, that's where we sent the letter to. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Okay. Let's go to Daniel in Houston. Daniel. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, uh, I have my cases, I-751. I just submit on 2019, May, and I received a biometric on 2020, November. But it's still, my case is still just pending. And I was just trying to contact them, uh, the Congress and you the You filed UHA. your adjustment when? I-751 adjustment. Oh, 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 you did your I-751 or I-45? Those are two different things. I-751. Okay, when did you do it? Uh, I did it on May of 2019. And you have not gotten I'm, an interview yet? Nothing. And three years? Three you, years. You're still with your, with your spouse? Yes. File, file for your citizenship today. Okay, uh, I don't. You don't affect me that one. No, it's going to make it go faster. You'll get an interview for your citizenship and an interview for your I seven fifty one simultaneously. File your N four hundred. That's what you do right now. Okay, and uh, one last thing. They was just like send me an email like I should just receive between one hundred twenty days. File should your I citizenship. Just okay, all right. That's my advice. Doesn't change no matter okay. what they say. File your citizenship. Okay. All right. Okay, right. Okay. All right, right. Thank you. You're welcome. Try back to Marie. Marie. Hi, Brad. How are you? I'm good. I am calling to ask you this question. I file, I file, I file for my husband as a green card holder, but I'm waiting on my citizenship interview. Are we allowed to, to travel in-state if I want to fly? 
waiting for your citizenship? I applied for my citizenship. Of course, you can, you can travel wherever you want. No, but I want to know if he can fly because we only got a a, a document. A if he has a notice. valid passport, he can fly domestically. It is highly unlikely that anybody would bother him. Nobody could ever give you a personal guarantee, but I, I, I it is extraordinarily unlikely um, okay. that anybody would bother him as long as he has a valid passport to show TSA. Um, and worse comes to worse. Let's assume the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. He's the one in a million that they arrest to put in deportation. They're, they're backed up trying to deport people four years. By the time he gets okay. his hearing, it'll be 2026 and you'll be a citizen in six months and he'll get his green card anyway based on your citizenship. How long, how long is the citizenship taking now? Because it's been a year since, since it's I more, If it's day, more than a year, there's something wrong. It's taking very fast these days. Okay, because they said it's 15 months. Now it's taking less than six, it's six months, seven months, three months. Very fast. So uh, if you haven't heard anything, you filed when? Uh, last year. When? No, early, uh, yes, last year. Last year, uh, May, May or August. All right. So uh, May and August is two different things. Because if it's August, you haven't even been August, a year yet. August, August, August. Okay, so it hasn't even been a year yet. You've been waiting eight, nine months. You should, yes. you should be a citizen by the end of the summer. Okay. All right? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go to Catherine in Corpus Christi, Texas. Hi, Catherine. Catherine Hello. How are you, my dear? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Good. What's going on? Now, I have two questions for you. Yes. I am a green card holder, conditional green card holder. Uh huh. And I received my two year extension. So my third year should be coming in February next year. And I wanted to travel to Africa. What documents should I carry? Because my name in the passport and my name in the green card are different. Your name in the passport is your single name and the name in your green card, yeah. your married name. Okay. Yes. So you have a passport in your maiden name. You have yes. an expired two-year green card in your married name. You have an extension yeah. letter in your married yeah, for name. Two years. You're yes. going to travel with four documents, and you're going to present them all. Okay, let me just write them down. Okay. I already said three of them. Okay, here. Yeah. You're going to travel with your passport and your maiden name. Yes. Your, your original marriage certificate to show your married name. Yeah. Your green card that's expired, and the letter oh, okay. extending your green card. Those four documents let you back in the United States. Okay, so all have to be original. <laughs> yes. The green card and the marriage certificate. Yes. And the extension. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then when can I apply for my citizenship? You and your husband are together? Yeah, oh, we are still together. They okay, live together, financial relationship, all good. You, Everything. You good. filed for the I-751 when? In November. Okay, because my... Uh, my two year was ex was getting over in February of this year. Okay, so one year from the time that you filed the I seven fifty one, you can file for your naturalization. So whatever that date is. November. In November. Okay, okay, that, okay, okay, that's good. And then now the second question is: I have a daughter in Africa. She's 25 years. I'd like to apply for her. You can do that now. You do not have to. That question gets everybody all the time. I get that question all the time. Even though you're a conditional resident, even yeah. though you haven't removed the conditions and you have this pending extension, file for your daughter. You can do it right now. But will they need anything on the income? It won't affect? You're going to need income in about five years from now. It's about a five to seven oh, year wait. Okay. So put in the papers now. Don't worry about what your, you worry about what your income is in five, seven years. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. All right, good luck. Okay. Let's go to LV in Laporte, Indiana. Oh, hi, Brad. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. 
Um, I'm originally from Cameroon, uh-huh. and I just got in, in um, February 23rd of this year. And um, recently, um, the TPS program has just been added for Cameroon. And I came in as a J1 under the 212E rule. And I was just wondering, you know, would that have anything to affect no. Um, no, my... you still get TPS. My... Sorry? You will still get TPS. And what if I wanted to apply in the course of application? What about like my fiance who is back home? Would that be eligible? Would that be a problem? How would you? You can't apply as a TPS recipient for a fiance, um, and you can't apply as a J visa holder with a two-year home residence requirement for a fiance. So your fiance would independently have to try to get a visa. Okay. Um, another question. So um, I'm a little bit concerned about, um, so I, I won't have any problem in the nearest future about, um, sorry, I won't have any um, problem in the nearest future in regards to if I have to change my um, uh, my status from a TPS to becoming a permanent resident, how does that work? You have to get sponsored for a green card. No, there's no thing that just automatically changes you from TPS to a green card. So you would need a job sponsor, a family sponsor. Okay, what about an H-1B? Will that um, give me access to getting a green card then? An H-1B is a work visa, but if you're getting TPS, you don't need it because you have a work permit. Both, you need a job to sponsor you for a green card. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Your time. Let's go to... Ali in Huntsville, Texas. Yes, sir. Hi, how are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Oh, I have two very quick questions. Yes. Uh, actually, I filed the I-30 uh, for my two kids and my mom at the same time, the same day. And when I go online to check on two of them, it says actively, uh, actively review. And then the other one is still saying receive, receive and received and sent and received notice was sent. That's what they say. Right. Why does that have two differences? Well, you, you file for two children and a parent, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm a sir. Um, every application is a separate application. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Good, good. Now you got me. Okay. You ever see you ever see a man with this this beard? No. Maybe he's calling you pretty. Uh, sorry, Maybe. sorry. It's okay. It's okay, Ali. The 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 answer is you file three separate applications. They all have a life of their own. They're not attached to one another. So just the way the processing works. Okay. So don't look into it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So the last question is I I call uh, USCIS to try to expedite them. You and calling immigration is not expediting him. You can call them every yeah. day. They're not going to expedite it. The person who answers the phone has no authority to expedite it. You have no, to, I called. You I have called to write. Them. You can call them again. Call them every day. They're not going to expedite it. So whatever you tell me, they say it doesn't matter. They're not doing anything. When you call them on the phone, they do nothing for you. You're not even talking to immigration. You're talking to nobody who has authority to act on behalf of immigration to do anything for you. Okay. Okay. When you call immigration, it's that what it's a circular conversation. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. I'm going to put in. I'm going to put in a request to the officer, sir. And they, and then it just goes into a black hole somewhere, and nobody gets back to you. Nobody. The uh, the person who has authority to expedite your case, the person who has authority to approve your case on these applications, the only way to communicate with them is by letter. You write a letter. So I did file online. So how, how can I send the letter to them? You take out a pen and paper or you get on a computer and you put the case number and you write a letter, explain your situation, why they need an expedite, what's your humanitarian reason, and you mail it to the place where your application receipt came from. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay. So I'm here with Shane, and he has an amazing true life success story. He's been in the United States for more than 30 years. Uh, he, he floundered around with several different law offices until he found us here at Spar and Bernstein. And we are here today to congratulate him because just...
Three days ago, he was mailed his green card after living here out of status for over 30 years. Shane, welcome to Bradshaw Live. And I know you have an amazing story to tell everybody. So let's start by saying congratulations to you. Thank you. It was a very, very long journey that you had. And uh, how's it feel now? Oh, I'm so elated, excited, and um, even right now my hands are still sweating, holding on to the envelope that came to me. <laughs> and you have the green card sitting right there. Right You're here. not letting it go. <laughs> you brought it right into the studio, not right? Not even my sight. Not That's at all. right. Yes. So uh, you came, where are you originally from, Shane? Originally I'm from Jamaica. You're from Jamaica. So when did you come to the United States of America? What year? I came in, Hurricane Gilbert happened the Monday, and I came the Thursday. I left the Thursday. What year is this? 1988, I believe. 1988. Yes. How old believe. were you? Were you a young man back <laughs> I was then? A young were you a boy? Man. I was a young man. How Just, old were you at the time? I think I was uh, about 19 or 20. 19 or 20 so years old. I forgot how old I was. So, but, so uh, how was life in Jamaica before you came? Actually, life was kind of good. I was working in the hotel industry. I lived with my aunt and uncle in Montego Bay. Uh -huh. and uh, I like Montego Bay. Well, the hotels are there. Yes, right. and, and working in the industry right. was like, life is grand. You go to the beach and you go to work and you go wherever you want and that's it. So what, what made you choose as a 19, 20-year-old man? You're just starting out in life. You got, a, I guess, a, presumably a decent job. What made you first decide to come to America? Being in Jamaica, having a great job, you know, and everything, I, was, I did go try to get a visa in, um, in Kingston at the embassy and it was turned down. So I didn't think about it. I just said, you know what, I'll just live my life. So when the hurricane happened, when Hurricane Gilbert happened, and I saw the devastation. Well, the hotel shut all down. All the hotels and no everything. Job. I was like, uh-uh, I can't stay here. I can't stay here. So how'd you get to America? What'd you do? The airport was closed. And I, and I said to myself, regardless of what happened, the first flight out, I'm going to be on that plane. Now, as a God-fearing person and a person who used to go to church every day, I asked God for guidance, for strength and health to go to the whole way. When you flew to America and you got off the plane in America, uh -huh. what did you do at the airport? I've never been to the United States before and I've never flown on a plane before. So it was a matter of worrying. I, I, I'm, I'm like worried sick, what do I do? So what, what I just, um, something told me, when you get off the plane, of course, because this was Chicago O'Hare Airport, the, one of the largest airports in the United States. You don't just, the plane doesn't just fly and come to the terminal. It, it actually has a bus that would then transport you to the terminal. So I saw the bus, I went on the bus with everyone else. You couldn't do exactly. that now. Exactly. There's no way, exactly. you, no way you could do that exactly. now. Exactly. Now your journey really began because it took you 30 years to get a green card. What happened? The hard part. Whereas you get here and you're thinking, you, how are you gonna start a new life? Um, there are people that you meet and they tell you, you know, be careful who you speak to, be careful who you tell your situation to, and so on. I kind of knew my way around the kitchen. I had dreams and aspirations of being an actor. Um, I went into that a little. I worked at a few restaurants here and there in the city. How did you survive? The Caribbean community is very close-knit and, you know, Someone who basically I met in Chicago, they, they basically drove me from Chicago to New York and, you know, introduced me to people that, you know, I, they knew here and I stayed with them and that's how I ended up, you know. How did you survive year by year? Year by year. Just, yeah. gee, it's just whatever job that I could get. A gas station, you pump gas, working at a restaurant, cook. Cook, clean Open the dishes, everything. delivery, everything. Wash your pots bigger than me. I could right. hide in the pots, yes. What did you do, if anything, to try to make a better life for yourself here? Well, I knew that um, getting, yourself, um, legal. getting yourself legal was, was, was important. And um, they said, you gotta be, you got to be married now, based on what the laws are. you got to be married to, to get it to happen. But brought up, being brought up in my Christian way of life, I was thinking, oh, no, you know, I don't want to get married for that. You know, I just want to get married for the right reasons. And one time. So in somebody that I met in Chicago who came to New York, wanted to go about, you know, wanted to be with me. And I tried to show the person, look, here, you don't have to want to marry to me because while working, while working in the restaurant industry, I've done so well that 
I've worked at restaurants like um, Sylvia's in Harlem, uh, opened up Olive Garden in Times Square, did a few, played a few extra parts in some movies. And that person actually saw, went to the movie and saw me and then came to New York with roses and said, she's not leaving New York until we get married. That's so you were proposed to by a woman? Yes. And we went to City Hall right, right. here. And, and when was this? I think it was in August of 1999, I believe. All right, so, and this is the same woman you're married to to this day? No. Okay, what happened? No. The lawyer that we went to to get the paperwork started, apparently um, the person would send it. The information from we filed would be sent to the home. But this person would hold on to the paperwork. The wife? The wife would hold on to the paperwork. So she was trying? And would use it against me. So she, was, she, she basically was, was uh, using her power of being a citizen over, over your me. need for a green card yes. and, and abusing you in that sense. And I had no idea what the laws are or whatever. So what happened with that marriage? Well, eventually we, we had to divorce, but and the, you the never lawyer... Got, and you never got a green no, card? No, because, because uh, the lawyer called me and was like, what happened? You didn't go to the interview. I'm like, I didn't know what interview. Then they were like, it was sent to you and so on. So in trying to get things started, knowing what was happening, because we already had... This person was like, if you, if, you know, we got to get a house and I had to make sure I get a house with them, and this person didn't have a job, and I worked at Morgan Stanley, and Sylvia's at the same time. We got the house in Long Island, and... Uh, what were you doing at Morgan Stanley? <laughs> I was working as a conference room coordinator. Uh -huh. And uh, when I saw how some of these establishments work, and their lawyers and attorneys, I was like, you know what, I gotta get me a better lawyer. So I started working at different law firms. How many different law firms? <laughs> I don't know, about six or seven. Six or seven law big firms. Big firms. And what, what did you do at these different big firms? I worked from receptionist, paralegal. You when you you're in those positions, you see how they work. As much as how um, clients come in and pay their money, it's like you almost seem like a number. People don't, sometimes the receptionist might remember you, but it baffles me that the attorney may not remember you. And they're like, what's your name again? And you're like, okay. And you tell them, and then you know they, you try to remind them of your case. And you're like, but they should know your case. That's what you're paying them for. It wasn't just my experience. It was the experience of working at these firms and seeing clients that come in and what they had to, you know, what did these clients had to go through. How did you eventually get your green card? When I, I was married again. And you got married I got, again. I got married again. And when I got married again, this was one time I knew, I hoped it would have worked because I mean, this person is so beautiful. Even women came up to her and said, you're so beautiful. <laughs> That's right. how this was. But um, living in Long Island, and it was rough because this person, we did not get along in the sense where she not only cheated on me on numerous occasions, but I find stuff on phones and phone numbers everywhere. So then when I found out about on your show, I found out by hearing your show on the radio, about this is before you, YouTube and Facebook, when I was right, on the radio show. Right, right, right. When you're on the radio show, and I heard about the show, and I heard about the law, about the battered spouse. Mm -hmm. I Emotional that. abuse. Yes, I, f I heard about that, and I was like, wow, I could, have, I could have known about that when I was in my first marriage. But this time, I have all the proof. I have videotape, I have pictures, I have everything. So I submitted all those stuff, and what? I filed it myself to immigration. You still didn't come to me. Right. You but just you, listened to me. I, I listened to you, but, but I didn't, didn't come know to me. because you were so out there in that everybody knew about you. You're on the radio a lot. And I'm like, this guy's advertising so much. In my mind, I'm like, you know what? Nah, I'll just go, go to a private one. Or and the same lawyer, as in me being somebody who um, I'm going to be with you no matter what. I'm gonna, if you're my barber, you're going to be my barber for 10 years. If you're my lawyer, you're going to be my lawyer for 10 years. But it doesn't work that way all the time, especially with legal stuff. He took forever to even get me a work permit. So you filed on your own, and then you went to a lawyer to complete the case, and, yes, the, and the case got denied. Before it got denied, uh -huh. I said, you know what? Just in case, let me come and go see this spawn burn. Let me go check him out. And during that time when I went to check, check you out, the DACA thing came out. 2012. Yes. And I went... I came to, because you were inviting people we to come doing, to the We office. were doing free seminars. Free seminars, right. that's what it was. And right. I came to say, let me go investigate this guy. Because he's just another law firm that I've, I've heard about and I've worked at so many. Let me see if he's one of them. Listen, people, let me tell you, he did not tell me to say this, and nobody can tell me to say what I want to say. 
when I came here, I came to see what they're about and if they're really as good as they say they are on, by people I've heard on the street and on what I hear on the radio and so on. So I sat in the back and I saw how he answered people's questions and he said, look, if I can't help you, I'll tell you right there and then. Just answer these basic questions. He gave, him some, he, he, he gave a lady uh, some questions, the lady gave him some answers. He said, speak to this attorney and I'll see you later. He, speak, he answered a few more questions from other people and I was like, wow, this guy knows his stuff. One of the things I loved about you, Mr. Bernstein, yeah. was that on your radio show, especially when you're speaking to people who call in, you tell them not just the truth, but you tell them what the law is according to what their situation is. And you compare what they're saying, whatever information they give you, you use it to your best knowledge on what they're giving you and what you know of the law. And no matter what any law you may want to say, if it's not in accordance to what the law actually is, they can't really help you. Because you know what? Immigration still have to obey the law just the same. Correct. So once you know the law and you're applying what the person's seeking or what the situation is, you know yes or no if you can help them. And I'm happy to know that you, can, you, you would actually tell them, yes, I can help you. Yes, we can help you. Or you know and what? I said a lot of times in that seminar, so, no, you can't no, be helped. No, you can't be helped. That's you right. You tell them that. And, and you watch this from in the back. I watch this from the back. And, and I happened? didn't stay long. I noticed that you were even giving out refreshments to some of your clients. I'm yeah. like, this never happened unless you're a big high profile client that I've seen at investment firms where clients come in and they have the you know luncheons or breakfast. But these are million dollar people clients. Right, right. right. No, but these are working. These are working. But for you to see working yeah. class people doing that, right? My, my my decision was made up. I got up and I went back to work. I was like, it's done deal. I know what to do. But before going back to work, I went to the other lawyer that I was dealing with, and I said, you know what? Whatever paperwork you have on me, please, I need them right now. I got them. And the next day after work, I came. Listen to me, people. The consultation fee is the best thing you can do. It's a sacrifice to the right direction. The sacrifice to the right direction. That's a good. That's a good saying. I'm, I mean, could I use that? Yes. It is You're a sacrifice to, to the right. I'm authorized. I sacrifice. Right. Sacrifice. So what right did we do here at Spar and Bernstein to help you? So after leaving the building. I said, how much do I need to pay and everything, and I and we started. And we refiled, refiled the whole. Refiled the whole thing. And you got your work permit right away? My work permit came quicker than I couldn't believe. I, I mean, it took so long with the previous attorney right. that I thought maybe it was going to take that time or longer, being that you guys have so many clients. And I'm like, wow, how do you get it so quickly? And then, and then you got approved. Again, spawn burn scenes go by the law. And when they know the law, they know the facts, and the facts are the truth. All right, well, truth is truth. And you got your green card now. And I got my green card. As, as, a, as a, <laughs> uh, an abused spouse by proving extreme emotional abuse and that you're in a bona fide valid marriage. Yes. And this was after 30 years. Basically, you were a man without a job after a hurricane in Jamaica. There was devastation there was nothing. everywhere, nothing. And it took you 30 years and in those 30 years, it took you about 25 or 26 years to finally find us. Yes. But eventually, you did wait at some more period of time, but eventually, today, you are a green card holder, a lawful permanent resident of the United yes. States. I wish I knew you guys longer. I, I wish I, I wish you now. <laughs> I've been doing this since 1993. You could have come a long time ago. But better well, late, but better late, late than, than never. never. Better and than uh, never. congratulations, and I appreciate Again, you coming on, you. On, on, on the show and telling everybody that you know, what we say, you know, we walk the walk and we talk the talk here. Yes. And I appreciate for you to confirm all that. More than a pleasure. And People, listen to me. Spawn Bernstein is the place to go. If Spawn Bernstein says, give them this for the consultation fee, not only does it go towards your case, but also it's the, what did I say it was? It's the, it's the path to the right direction. The first step. The first step to the right direction the consultation fee. So, call Spawn Bernstein at 1-800-529-5465. And no one told me to say this, all right? Been there, done that. Thank you very much, Shane. Congratulations. Thank you very all much. All right, look forward to hearing about your trip back to Jamaica. People look forward forget, to People are gonna forget what you look like, I think. <laughs> I believe so. All right, <laughs> Thanks then. for coming on. A pleasure, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.